Lou said he might sit his big three in OKC after their fourth game in a six-day road trip, but that did not happen. LeBron, Kevin Love, and Kyrie all played, and the Cavs still lost to the Thunder, snapping their four-game win streak against OKC. The Cavs are 36-16, and 16, 20 games above 500. Max Kellerman. Yep. Do we still believe this Cavs team can compete versus the Warriors for the chip? Believe is the operative word, Molly. Okay. Because if you believe, it's based on faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when you think about what that means, uh, some will take that to mean faith, meaning belief in the absence of evidence, right? Because if there was evidence there, then it wouldn't be faith. It would just be rational thought. Uh, if you believe in the, war, in, the, in the Cavs' ability to win a championship, the rubber match against the Warriors, you have faith in this team. But... Is it really in the absence of evidence entirely? This year, I would say yes. This year, though, we've seen Kyrie Irving's handles even last night. They were ridiculous. Kyrie Irving can get to any place in the floor, on the floor to do what he wants differently than anyone else in the game. It's just different. Even Steph, I think, whose handles turn him into kind of a long-range mobile artillery unit. But Kyrie's handles are special. Special. And Kevin Love is having an excellent season, banging on the glass and sharp shooting from long range. And LeBron James is LeBron James. So you think, okay, fine, those kind of ingredients we've seen this year. But if you've watched the Cavs and watched the Warriors at this moment, there's no way rationally you believe that the Cavs can beat the Warriors. The faith comes in because we have seen evidence in the past, in the not too distant past. And if you want to tell me, look, I just saw what LeBron James did in the finals last year when it looked like all hope was lost. And so based on that past experience, even though this team is not playing the way that team did and there are changes every year, even if the principal characters remain the same, the, the, the nature of a team can change. But I have faith in LeBron. I can buy that. So That's you're a the believer, I think to be it's clear, a series. Max. You're a believer. It's a series, but if you say who's going to win that series yeah. right now, it started today, uh -huh. I have to say the Warriors. What have okay. the Cavs shown that tells you that they can win that series right now? Only faith in LeBron. No, it goes deeper than that. Um, I disagree. Uh, I'm not saying that the Warriors are not the favorites, but I disagree that, that we haven't seen anything and, and that we shouldn't think that the Cavs can repeat. Um, I think the acquisition of Kyle Korver, who, by the way, is shooting nearly 50% from three-point range for the Cavaliers. It's like 49.4% from three-point range. I think that's a big deal, particularly when you consider the fact that LeBron James, 55% of his assists are the spot-up three-point shooters. Remember, we're getting J.R. Smith back eventually. You've got Kyle Korver. Kyrie Irving is nasty. There are questions about Kevin Love's back. There's no doubt about that. And I think if you look at the Cavs and you view them as a spot-up shooting team for the most part, or Kyrie dancing one-on-one, -on -one, that's not going to be enough. But here's where it gets interesting. Playoff basketball slows down. Playoff basketball gets more physical. And if LeBron James decides that he's going to be a power forward, playing with his back to the basket, posting dudes up and attacking from that level, not only could the Cavs potentially be more efficient offensively, but they can disrupt Golden State's rhythm by slowing the pace and slowing them from being the up-tempo team that they want to be. And so when you have a situation where you're looking at Golden State, Max, there's no doubt that they're the favorites. There's no doubt that they're the most lethal offensive force that we've seen, arguably, in modern times. What makes them so dangerous is that teams actually try to shoot jump shots against them. And where that's a problem is the additional length of Kevin Durant with an Iguodala, with Draymond who can defend, with Clay who can defend, and their ability to disguise and hide Steph Curry on the defensive side of the ball is very significant. But posting them up and slowing them down minimizes that to a degree. And because of it is why I say the jury is still out and I still give the Cavs a chance. The Warriors are the favorite. Max is right about that. But I can't rule out the Cavs with the trading deadline approaching, and I can't rule out the Cavs if they decide to play big boy basketball come playoff time. That's where it's going to get interesting because you're not going to beat Golden State shoot perimeter shots, but you might have a chance with Ja Ja Pajulia in the middle if you decide to post up. It could get interesting. Well, you're still talking about faith in LeBron. 
because you're absolutely right. You, you identified the weakness in the Warriors, which is even though they have length now, because Durant is practically a seven-footer and they can play defense, they're a little light in the butt, as they used to say. You know, they don't have that big, strong guy holding it down in the middle. And so you can post up against those guys. It's one of the reasons the Clippers don't do better against them, because Blake Griffin, for whatever reason, whether it's Doc Rivers not calling it for him or Blake not getting down there, won't consistently do that against that team. So, so by, but LeBron's game is so much more. He can post, but at times doesn't seem over-eager to do it. And rarely do you see the Cavs revolve an offensive game plan around that. Faith in LeBron. And I understand it. He is such an amazing player, and he's so focused on winning championships by any means necessary now, whether it means getting Kevin Love going by sacrificing a playoff game in Toronto just to get Love going. Okay, that doesn't work. What else do we have to do? Let's just hunt down mismatches against the Warriors, and then in the fourth quarter it'll be all me and, and, and Kyrie Irving thinks LeBron. You know, whatever he has to do, he'll do. And one of those things you have faith in because we just saw him do it almost two years in a row when you consider how little he was working with two years ago. One of the things he has to do, because he's the guy who'd have to do it, is get down in that paint and act, as you said, like a power forward, like a, like, like, like a paint player, like a post player. He would have to do that consistently for seven games. Um, even that kind of light at the end of the tunnel for this team, that little ray of hope, is, is a long shot. But if someone could possibly do that, I suppose it's LeBron James. Think about the Warriors' offense right now, Stephen A., and you've praised their defense in the recent past. Think about their offense. They run sets where the best option for the other team is a wide-open Clay Thompson from three. Think about that for a second. That's the best option sometimes the other team's got. I mean, it is going to be a Herculean effort and then some to overcome this Warriors team. But if you think the Cavs can do it, it's because you know the most special player by a factor of something in the world is LeBron James. And if anyone can do it with a little crew behind him, I suppose it's him. Well, I don't think it's just about faith in LeBron James. Just like I have faith in LeBron James, you've got faith in Steph Curry. You've got faith in Kevin Durant. Of course, it's all about faith Not in like some degree. You got, you got, you got to believe in somebody. But I think that the part that you're missing is that it's not just playoff basketball. It's who's going to get the benefit of the calls because of their style of play. Let's take into consideration real quick, Max, how that 3-1 deficit turned around for Cleveland. LeBron ultimately got Draymond Green uh, uh, ejected. How did that happen when the bodies collide and Draymond Green ended up on the floor because LeBron knocked him down? And then I thought it was a bogus ejection as far I'm talking, uh, you know, suspension ultimately because I didn't feel he should have been suspended. But at the same time, he sort of kicked at the thigh of LeBron James and then ultimately his track record doomed him. OK, what about game six when you and I still fawn over how LeBron James blocked Steph Curry shot and then turned around and talked smack like him? Like, who do you think? you are you don't know who's house you in in this regard so those kind of things in other words the gate the series once they were down three nothing got exponentially more physical and then check this part out max why why is that so relevant because up until that point it wasn't that physical why because we were led to believe and we've been conditioned to believe that the NBA got softer because they wanted a more up-tempo style of game that was more appealing to the eyes of the fan but when LeBron was down 3-1 all of a sudden they squashed that and they let it get physical why because he put his it's star LeBron. power on the line because, against so, it so, yes the star power but it is so LeBron saying, Stephen A uh, it's yeah, it's LeBron but, but, who went at who went at Draymond it was LeBron who it's Sun Tzu the but, art of war when I, your I, enemy I, is agitated provoke him he he did that to Draymond. He screamed yeah, but, on yeah. Steph. He laid his reputation on the line to counteract the changes of the rules to see if the refs would really do it. That's all yeah, yeah. on. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying that it buffers my point. My point is because of LeBron and his star power and the fact that he was allowed to get away with being more physical, I'm saying to you, that's an element we can't ignore because if the NBA allows that physicality to come into play, Come finals time, that's another reason it can get significantly more interesting. We'll step aside from the, from the NBA for right now and yes. get into a little NFL. Gentlemen, Herm Edwards will join us coming up. Roger Goodell left the Super Bowl stage with the quickness on Sunday. Browns left tackle Joe Thomas 
is calling him a rat for doing so. We'll get into exactly why Roger has so many haters. Plus, is it warranted? And reunited, and it feels so bad. Kevin Durant makes his return to OKC tomorrow night. So who's more responsible for this feud between him and Russell Westbrook continuing this far into the season? Ty Lue said he might sit his big three in OKC after their fourth game in a six-day road trip, but that did not happen. LeBron, Kevin Love, and Kyrie all played, and the Cavs still lost to the Thunder, snapping their four-game win streak against OKC. The Cavs are 36-16, and 16, 20 games above 500. Max Kellerman. Yep. Do we still believe this Cavs team can compete versus the Warriors for the chip? Believe is the operative word, Molly. Okay. Because if you believe, it's based on faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when you think about what that means, uh, some will take that to mean faith, meaning belief in the absence of evidence, right? Because if there was evidence there, then it wouldn't be faith. It would just be rational thought. Uh, if you believe in the, war, in, the, in the Cavs' ability to win a championship, the rubber match against the Warriors, you have faith in this team. But... Is it really in the absence of evidence entirely? This year, I would say yes. This year, though, we've seen Kyrie Irving's handles even last night. They were ridiculous. Kyrie Irving can get to any place in the floor, on the floor to do what he wants differently than anyone else in the game. It's just different. Even Steph, I think, whose handles turn him into kind of a long-range mobile artillery unit. But Kyrie's handles are special. Special. And Kevin Love is having an excellent season, banging on the glass and sharp shooting from long range. And LeBron James is LeBron James. So you think, okay, fine, those kind of ingredients we've seen this year. But if you've watched the Cavs and watched the Warriors at this moment, there's no way rationally you believe that the Cavs can beat the Warriors. The faith comes in because we have seen evidence in the past, in the not too distant past. And if you want to tell me, look, I just saw what LeBron James did in the finals last year when it looked like all hope was lost. And so based on that past experience, even though this team is not playing the way that team did and there are changes every year, even if the principal characters remain the same, the, the, the nature of a team can change. But I have faith in LeBron. I can buy that. So That's you're a the believer, I think to be it's clear, a series. Max. You're a believer. It's a series, but if you say who's going to win that series yeah. right now, it started today, uh -huh. I have to say the Warriors. What have okay. the Cavs shown that tells you that they can win that series right now? Only faith in LeBron. No, it goes deeper than that. Um, I disagree. Uh, I'm not saying that the Warriors are not the favorites, but I disagree that, that we haven't seen anything and, and that we shouldn't think that the Cavs can repeat. Um, I think the acquisition of Kyle Korver, who, by the way, is shooting nearly 50% from three-point range for the Cavaliers. It's like 49.4% from three-point range. I think that's a big deal, particularly when you consider the fact that LeBron James, 55% of his assists are the spot-up three-point shooters. Remember, we're getting J.R. Smith back eventually. You've got Kyle Korver. Kyrie Irving is nasty. There are questions about Kevin Love's back. There's no doubt about that. 